Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the third and final segment of this week's edition of My Testimony. Thank you. Now, before we went for the break, you were just confirming with us that the doctors could not do anything about this mass. They couldn't do anything. And doctor, you were saying the mass was growing rapidly. Yes, it was growing very rapidly. And Any chance it would have moved over to the other lung? It's quite possible, man of God. And even the procedure which they were doing, initially they thought it was fluid. So they were trying to stick in a needle and to draw that fluid and then to send it to the lab. But because it was a mass, they couldn't take out the fluid. Because they thought that if they extract the fluid, it would give them clues as to what it was. But it wasn't working for them. And like you are saying, there is a chance that it could have spread to the other lung. And actually not just to the other lung, but even to the chest wall. Because imagine you are sticking a needle into a cancer or a tumor. As you withdraw your needle, you can seed it, what we call seeding of the tumor. Spread it to the chest wall. So they were trying to help, but they could have caused even more problems in their helping of her. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> My sister, I can see you are very touched. You, you just can't imagine it happening again. You would never want to go such, through such an experience. I have never actually gone through anything like that my whole life, and I am more touched because of God's grace. Because I know if it was someone else, then they probably wouldn't have come out of that situation. It was just bad. Okay, so you were out of work for how long? Over a month, a month and some days. In fact, they, I was meant to be out for, for quite longer, for quite a longer time, but, well, I it know. didn't turn out that way. Now, tell us what happened. The doctors couldn't do anything about it. What then did you decide? So the doctor started running tests on me. He did the TB test, and he needed it Im like immediately, and uh, it came out. It was negative. And, you know, they were checking, well, using other means to see if I had any, like, any other ailment they were suspecting inside me. But, you know, all the tests were coming out negative. And for him, he was shocked. He expressed that. He told me, he says, I don't get this. And this is a specialist I'm talking to. And I just had to stay in hospital feeling so much pain and just deteriorating as he just saw me every day and, you know, just hoping that maybe each day he would come up with something, but nothing was happening. Doctor, I know you don't like this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. In your field, does it happen that you go blank? Men of God, there are a lot of things which we don't have answers to. So it happens a lot that you end up not finding a diagnosis and we end up blaming other things. And we end up saying this is caused by this. And there is, for those who are in the medical field, there is one uh, word which we use, which we say idiopathic. idiopathic. It means we don't know what it is or we don't know the cause. So sometimes, Maybe we end up confusing patients with big words when we are also confused. I like, I like this man's honesty. So there you were, that this is surely a death sentence. The doctor doesn't know what it is. They obviously can't give you any medication. What then happened to you? I was, I was basically living in the hospital, you know, knowing that they don't know anything. I had so many questions. I had, you know, so many problems at that point. I felt I had so many problems, except my faith. 
I just believed that, you know, maybe I just need, to, I just had hope, in fact, because my faith had at some point failed me. I just had hope that God would just give me another chance to be there for my daughter, for my parents. And I stayed there for more and more days. And I was getting angry. I was getting angry at everybody. I was just, I was just something else. And I remember one night I was sleeping in the, it was like my home. They now treated me like someone who lives there. And one night- This is in hospital. This is in hospital, yeah. I had my private room there. And one night I remember I dreamt, it was so, so vivid. I could not believe it because I was actually sweating when I woke up. I remember seeing in the dream, I remember seeing the, the specialist who was um, attending to me. And he was standing somewhere near my bed and there were people laughing at him. They were coming to him and laughing and, you know, like mocking him. And for me, it didn't make sense. So from that moment onwards, I said, no way, no way. I go to UFI and, hey, this, this to me has to mean something. I might not have met uh, my father and my mother, Prophet and Amai Makandiwa before, but hey, I believe in the God that they serve. And Lord, I have been skeptical but I want out. So I said to the specialist, can you please take me out of here? And he was really, he really didn't want to take me out. And I remember telling my mom that if he doesn't take me out, I'm running out of here. I don't know where they're gonna find me, but I am going out. If that God that Prophet Makandiwa talks about is there, he's the one that's gonna save me because I am not staying to this. He said to me, well, you really seem to be wanting to go out, but you know, we, bo we all can see what you're going through. So I'm just gonna let you go. And again, I believe it was God, because he still had the right to say no. But he let me go, and I remember coming out of that hospital in a wheelchair, I couldn't even walk, you know. I had just deteriorated, I was pale, I had veins coming out of me, I was, I was just, I was just not, I was just a sorry sight. And, you know, the next thing is, my mom, she just couldn't tell what it was that was driving me to really want to get out, but she just thought, well, okay, we have to go and see someone else, at least. She really convinced me. And she says, but this time, why don't we look for a medical practitioner that's from the same church with us for advice? That's when we went and we visited Dr. Mtewe. And then I believe Dr. Mtewe referred you to the specialist of specialists. And then on the 3rd of August, you found yourself here. Yes. Tell us, what happened from there? Well, to start with, when a surgeon was telling me to go to church, for me it didn't make sense. I really looked at him like, aren't you supposed to be doing your job? Man of God, by the way, I am a surgeon and the chest is my area. I'm a chest surgeon. So when she came to me, she thought she was coming to a surgeon. And then I looked at her, I looked at the CT scans and the x-rays. Then I said, okay, we can take a biopsy. I can take you to theater. We can take a biopsy or we can take the tumor out. But before we do that, why don't we try something else, which I know works. I've tested it and I know it works.
I don't think your colleagues in the medical field would be too pleased with that. Yes. So I was hopeless already. And thank God for my mom as well, because, you know, she was on his side for some reason. And I just thought, oh, let me just do it for them. But, well, I don't, if God was really going to work for me, he should have just worked. I shouldn't have gone through this. If he is God, then why me? I mean, it's, I had just, well, started to live my life in a way that I, I felt that, you know, w was right. And I was trying my best to come back to Christ in a very big way. And yeah, and then I came to church. And I remember at that time, I had actually called one of my friends. I said, you know, I told her that um, my funeral policy, you can find it in this drawer, and it's like this, it's like this. I'm not getting buried in a funny casket. I was, you know, I was, I was ready to die. I was ready to die. And then I just came that day, you know, they carried me through, and then they put me um, on, on a seat that was, um, somewhere that side and well I remember seeing the man of God prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa like talking but I didn't hear anything I was pale I was in pain so I was just there I was like someone who's just there but like I really wasn't there this that's it. And I remember, what I do remember about that service is he took out, he had a bottle of anointing oil, and it's the day that he unveiled it. And he, he was speaking about it. And so people was, were standing up at some point, and I just decided something inside me just drove me to, like, why don't you just try and stand up and, and see what, this, what he may be talking about. But I was, the whole belief, my whole belief system was really gone down. And for me, I was just, you know, trying to reach out and I was desperate. I was really desperate. And then suddenly, from where I remember, he opened the bottle of anointing oil. And at that time, I managed to stand up. Let me understand this clearly, my sister. Was he anywhere near you? He was not anywhere near me. He was right in front here. And he just opened the bottle? He just opened the bottle to demonstrate like how it's used during the time he was actually explaining more on the anointing oil. And when he just opened it, I found myself standing my mom was probably shocked, and I was shocked too, because it's not anything that I could do, but at that moment, in a few seconds, I felt a wind, a cold wind coming from his direction. Can you take that again? He opened the bottle, you felt a cold wind coming from his direction towards you? Towards me. It was, it was like a mint. I always say like a mintish kind of thing because it felt like, like when you're taking a mint, you feel this cooling inside you. Mm. And, and I was feeling that, I was smelling it, I was feeling it, and I could feel and see that, you know, this, it, 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 this can be, this is a wind. What is happening? And immediately the wind just came and hit me straight on my forehead. And when it did, I just fell back. And when I fell back, the wind started moving down, down into my nostrils, right into my body. And then it traveled. And 
I couldn't even stand. I wanted to stand, but I couldn't. It was too powerful for me. And at that point, I, was, I wasn't scared. There was some sort of peace that I had because I knew that the place that I'm in, if I'm gonna die then well, that's God's will, but I could feel the wind moving down my body and it got right on my lung area and I could feel like a shake. I actually remember some of the people like from the health department that, 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 were, that were near me. They were looking at me, they were wondering what's really happening probably and I, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but I, I kind of saw that. And my mom, she was in shock. I remember my mom coming to them saying, where is the prophet? I'm going to run to the prophet right now. My daughter is dying. And you people are leaving her dying like this. But I really wasn't dying. I was overwhelmed with the power that had come. And so it moved right from up my body. Like I could feel it. You know, it's something that has never happened to me. And there was no mistake to it. I felt it moving down and shaking on my lungs and moving down, 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 even to my toes. I felt it, it got there. And then that very moment, I just stood up. I touched my lung. I couldn't feel any pain. I tried to do. I tried, you know when you, you don't understand how it feels like to actually get into hospital and be helpless when you least expect it. And for me, standing up was, was, was such an achievement. And I could stand up, I could do everything that I could not do for the past days. I was amazed. It was just instant. It was instant. I could do everything that I could not do. I tried it right there. I could lift my hands up. I could, I could just, you know, move my legs, my feet. I could move my hands any direction. I could just not feel any pain at all. Oh, I was, the pain was gone. The pain was gone completely. Now, after that, did you go back to the doctors? Well, after that, I went back to the doctors. Um, but before that night, I managed to make supper for my mom. And I remember she was in tears. She was looking at me. My daughter was, she couldn't believe it. Because I know she had just asked my mom a few days before she was, she just stopped, she, she had just stopped going to school because she had to come and be with me. Because I, I felt like I was dying. So she asked my mom, is my mom going? And she was just looking at me like, well, what is happening with this person? At one point, when one time she was bedridden and getting worse, and now she's cooking for us. And so, yeah, the next day, I went back to see the doctor and I told him everything that had transpired. Which and doctor now? This one? I went to Dr. Mtewe. Okay. <laughs> yes, because he's the one who had actually like advised me to, you know, come for church before anything. Okay. Now, doctor, did you take any more x-rays, any more scans after that? Yes, man of God. When she came to me clinically, she looked very well. But you know, she's a journalist. She wanted the evidence that she was healed. 
So I said, okay, it's fine. I'm going to order another chest X-ray. And then we'll compare the one before and the one after prayer. And I'm sure the media guys can show us the X-ray after the prayer. That's... <laughs> X-ray after prayer. You can see there is her name written down there, Tinashe's band. In case somebody might say it's another person's X-ray. The one on the left is before prayer. The yes, one on the, the right, one on is, the after right is after prayer. And there is actually a report which was written by the specialist after prayer. The lung fields are clear. No focal or diffuse pathology is seen. There is no evidence of any active tuberculosis. The heart is normal in size and configuration. No plural, hyla, or medicinal pathology is seen. Essentially normal examination. This is how many days after? The 30th of August. You came on the 3rd of August. I came on the 3rd. I went back on the next day. And, you know, it was just after. She went for the x-ray the day after, but the x-ray was normal. But to her, she needed a report. That's why we had the discrepancy on the date. The report was, it was then reported three weeks later. But the x-ray was taken the, the very following, following day. day. The 4th of but the, the specialist had, hadn't written the report. So I asked for a report. I said, no, she needs to see something which is written. Because, you know, I might be telling her what I wanted her to know. But so the specialist had to write a report two weeks later on. Well, 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 well. What then shall we say? Thank you very much, my sister. Thank you very much, doctor. When miracles do happen, it is just a reminder that God is still in the business of working out miracles. Your miracle is on the way. My miracle is on the way. You're my healer, you're my healer.